you know we're all about tools. They're great because they're going to give us so many ways that we can use them. And today we've got some special ones. We've got some neat cutting dies. They're not just regular cutting dies. They make some pretty amazing things and we're going to show you how to use those. And we have something that's called the perfect airbrush and that's going to be fun to see. Come, Come play, play with us. us. Okay, here are the tools we're featuring, all of these. But we're going to look at them one at a time. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll start with the Inky Annex Crafty Cuts dies, and this one is called a steel cage. Now, this doesn't look like a whole lot right here. <laughs> you know, it? it's a square. <laughs> it's called a square cage, but wait till you see what it does. Right. We have projects, but also kind of like to show you what it does when it actually gets run through your machine. Right. You come out here. I just have a piece of paper, a piece of um, patterned paper, and I run it through on this side. And if I grab the top part of it here and pull up, it makes, as you see, this great cage. Very fun. Sort of yeah. pop it out on this side. Very ingenious. So let's look at a project to see how that okay. gets used. And speaking of ingenious, here is a Christmas card that Debbie did. And um, here is our cage right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And as we pop it up, you can see that there are some die cuts and some holographic right. papers. Right, so you can so. layer those on before you set this piece on top. But isn't it great that you can you can embellish this piece of paper? So there are dazzles on here. There's a die cut set on here. And then it was run through the die cutting machine with this cutting die. And it went right through all of those pieces and created this cage that sort of pops up. Right. And notice that, um, and I noticed it when you did the other piece, is that there are two holes here so that you've got something right. you can attach so that you can pull this out and it will lift. Right. So those two little holes are already in there, ready for you to just put your twine through, or in this case, some silver cord. A ribbon. Yeah. It's so you've got this beautiful. button. And it's so cute. It's an interactive. It, it Let's is. turn it sideways so we can... Yes, yeah, so you go. Sort of, Here, there go. We go. Pull it. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be better? So it's neat? it's just very clever. Of course, it's a great tool, but what's clever is what you can do with it. Right. Now, just so far as the materials, what Debbie used is the uh, Christmas lace papers, but also this big die cut. Now. Right. I would really never have thought of putting a die cut on paper and then running it through Run, a die cutting with, machine. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know it would actually cut through it, but it did quite nicely. You, uh, she may have had to shim it a little bit with maybe an extra cardstock. But she also right added dazzles mm -hmm. on top of the die cut. So not only the paper and the die cut, but dazzles. That's now, right. they're all... You know, they're reasonably thin, right. but wow. And it went all through just with this piece of paper, this blue. She put all that on right. this blue piece of paper, and then she ran it through the, her machine. But actually, and, she uh -huh. also put the Merry Christmas dazzles oh, right down are, there. Down yeah. at the bottom. Right, so she did all of that in one step before she put it on the silver holographic background, Woo -woo. which looks like that. <laughs> so before she placed this cut piece on there, she put those die cuts onto right. the silver holographic and then she glued all of this right around the edges on top of it and there you go. And there's the snowflake that's on the inside. So you would um, kind of build your piece or create this piece first maybe right. and then think about what you can do on the inside. Right. Die cuts, dazzles are a couple of good options we would recommend. You want to see something else? Yes. Okay, let me get these out of the way. And I love this one. What this, an ingenious idea. This is so clever. Okay, look at this. We've got tweed hearts. We've got some dazzles. But when we lift up the cage, look what happens. Let me get the side view. Debbie has put some of the tweed hearts. They're kind of hard to see. I know, here. they are. But they're great in person. Okay, what are we going to do? Um, <laughs> okay, you hold that sideways. Okay, got it. And I'm going to lift the birds So suspended sideways. from the center of that cage are these dazzles right. that have been, they have been, uh, acetate has been sandwiched between double images of these dazzles. Right. And then she colored the acetate 
with Spectrum Noir pens. And she threaded them just with sewing thread. So when you pick this up, with gravity, they're hanging I straight know. down so we can't show but, it. <laughs> but in the real world, when gravity is... Uh, I think maybe when we're, when we're done, let's pull this one back out and show it I like in so. front of us. But okay. it is really pretty. It's like a birdcage. I also like that she has this part dark. There's a the little escaped bird. <laughs> and um, get in there, little guy. And on the inside, she's got the pink. So it's a dramatic right. change. Plus, you can see the dazzles down on the bottom. It, right. it says some birdie special so, so the, there's the the sweet the sweet the birdie dazzles yeah sweet tweets sweet tweets yes. dazzles. so there you so see cute. this is just the pattern paper this is the um, holographic the foil paper toll right. used here isn't that beautiful it looks like this. Oh That's on the inside. <laughs> and the acetate, and we saw this a few weeks ago on Stamp Camp mm -hmm. where we introduced the heat-resistant acetate, but you can use it for all sorts of things like sandwiching mm -hmm. uh, little birdies and coloring them. This is the foil paper tool right here and the ribbon. So that's what's going on to that little button right. on the front of it. And so remember, on the top of that uh, cutout, there are two little holes that are done with the right. cutting die, so you can just lace that ribbon right through there. And you can see that you can see that. And I am so sorry you just can't that see gravity it is way. not our friend. We're going to show it again at the end. Stay tuned how, for the end. <laughs> how are we going to do that, Gail? <laughs> We're going to show it. We're right going to change gravity it. at the end. <laughs> okay, there are birds in here. Okay, you get there the idea. Are. Okay, <laughs> so that's darling and wonderful and absolutely creative so fun to be able to see those now we're going to move we're going to move into some other cutting dies right and we're going to show them here here we are now we are a fan of uh, D D's distinctive leap she has uh, very very detailed cutting dies and some of them go together to create these really ingenious shapes and I think the brilliance that she's done is the technique which okay. is to softly shape so here are uh, here's a border here is um, bell floral stem this and is just this a is stem. called chickadee extras right so there are some different ways to use these. We've, we're using these extras as actual flowers. We are, and uh, the nice thing about this little piece is that you get multiples of it so you don't have to recut. Right, and here's just that one big strip. You yeah. can just run that through once, you get a whole bunch of them all at one time. Right. In fact, I can show you. Oh, I good. Will, it's there on the cover, but here is with one pass through the machine with some different colors. That's what I got. So there's a time saver there. Sure. Okay, and then here is a project that Lene did. So here's our border. Mm -hmm. And she also added the outside shape of the oval doilies mm -hmm. uh, cutting die. But these flowers are made with the uh, chickadees. With the, chickadee chi with the chickadee extras. <laughs> <laughs> so show us this technique. All right. So I've actually, I'm going to take some of the ones that I have on here. I, okay. I glued them on there, but just very, very lightly so I could peel them off and show you how they're going to be shaped using the, our Paper Blossoms uh, paper molding. Yeah, let me show you this. Take a couple of these off here. Um, this has got three of the uh, double-sided um let tools and then also the reverse tweezers that comes in a little case so um, it's nice to hold everything together and it's really those ends that you're going to be doing your right. shaping onto what I have I have a mouse pad so you okay. can use like a mouse pad you can use kind of a hard rubber mat would work well for for curving these shapes first of all I'm going to start with those green leaves let me point out okay. on the green leaves all Lene did for those was she took one of these pieces looks like that and she just sort of scored down the back of it. It's got that paper sort of stuck on there. It's the back. Yeah. She scored just right down the center of the back of it. I'm using a scoring tool for some reason. I, yeah, and I and think I, I, could, I would use, <laughs> let's use, use the tool the, we let's showed. Do that. Huh? Okay. Here's the ball end. Maybe a little bit here. Let me use this one. Okay. And go right down the center of it, like so. There you go. And then when you turn it over, you've got that, it's sort of folds right along there right. and then you've got this inverted leaf shape and it that, looks like that exactly as you said is going to become the leaves on the stem right. so 
so simple and yet so nice. And what I like is that it's not terribly delicate mm -hmm. because you can really push on these little puppies and it's they're not right. going to flatten on you. She did, if you look at the center of that flower, she did the same thing for those flowers. So this is what you're oh. seeing and then she cut off the end here to create the center of that flower. Very neat. That's all she did as far as molding on this one and then she just place these. Okay. On another card I'm going to show you a little bit more paper molding. So those side pieces are this piece. Right. Just going there. Just like that. So you can do a bouquet of them. Mm -hmm. You can do a single one or you can do the, the duo right. as here. In fact, why don't I go ahead and show you another another technique that you're going to see on one of the next cards. Uh, using about the medium, so it's about this one, about that size okay. of ball. If I start in the center of one of these, and just started rolling around and move my way out to the edges, it starts to make like a cup shape. Oh, it is curving. You can see that rolling up. I want the edge, edges to curl along with it, then I start moving my way out to the edges, and that curls them right up. You know, like it's ama so. what's amazing to me is that you're just doing that for a moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't a yeah. five-minute deal or even a one-minute deal. There this seconds. There's that curved shape. It's okay. cupped this way. If I turn it over, you see that glued piece of back. But that's... <laughs> they'll Put sit. your finger over it. They'll never notice. Like that. See it? But anyway, you can really get in and... And you can change it, you can really get it to go around and round it. Wow. You can see it sort of following that ball right around. Okay. And really cup those edges like you're going to see on one of our next cards. Ta-da! So here is uh, another card. Again, you can see that really nice border. Now, in this one, and one of the die cuts that we showed you is this. It's, again, may not look like a whole lot, but look what happens. It's just so much nicer than a straight strip of paper. So mm -hmm. that allows you, even though in this case, all of these little pieces were cut off, cut off so that right. we had that nice curve. But that's just another way to use it. So you can yeah. use one long stem or you can use the entire right. stem in one piece. So here it is with that entire stem and you've got all of these little uh, stems coming down to do the blossoms and the right. blossoms are in that same chickadee extra, That's the right? the same chickadee extra as you see little pieces like this and Lene just used some of those smaller ones and she just started going along the back with one of those balls. I use, I tend to use a smaller sized ball for a smaller sized piece of paper. That makes sense. So I can get a little bit more um, control over what I'm doing. You can, I can grab one of the other ones, even smaller tools, and go around the, the tiniest little edges if I want to get it into a little cup shape. And then when you turn it over, you've got this shaped And you know, piece we've of paper. carried these tools forever. And oh, yeah. um, just, they were originally done by McGill with mm -hmm. their punches to make flowers. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's just adding so much more. Now, all of these pieces are part of that chickadee extra. Right. So, and you can see how they've just been layered with one in the, in the center and then more on top. Really pretty. Isn't that beautiful? And those border strips along the ends there. There's a little yeah. inking that's been done on the edges and it's just, it's, I love those border strips. That's just a beautiful, it's almost kind of an art deco look. Mm -hmm. You want to see something else? Yes. Okay, here is that same curve, mm -hmm. but we have done um, these little guys and these are called bell flowers. And what they have is the flower and then this top part. Right. And it looks to me like they've kind of been kissed with snow. <laughs> In fact, mm -hmm. as you go down this uh, card, right. you can see snow on the ground. Which and of course, that's that crystal, that micro glitter um, that has been oh, spread on there. You. Just a little bit of the micro glitter has been put right there on the snowy suede. Oh, okay. Can we get in? Can we get in really close? It's a little bit there. It's a little bit on, the, that on the caps of those flowers. You can see it sparkling around. Hopefully you can see it sparkling so around. So just probably just a glue stick was just run along yeah. there and a little bit of that glitter sprinkled on. And then these are also the leaves. The These leaf die cuts are, are another one of the these distinctively die cuts. Right. They're not the ones that we're showcasing today, but they can be combined with some of the other ones right. that you see. And this is done with the uh, forest green suede. So mm -hmm. it, it may be looking black on your screen, but it's just such a deep, dark green that mm -hmm. sometimes that happens. So what we have is a progression of this 
along with this. So mm -hmm. all of this you can make with that set of three right. dies. Mm -hmm. Then if you want to add more, this is something else that you can do. So this comes with a couple of other dies, but just letting Different you options. see options, right. right? And again, what I love and what you will see later this year is more of the curving right. of the D's distinctive dies. So very, very curving neat. Curving and molding, and it's fun. It's a fun little technique that does mm -hmm. not take more than a, you know, like, 30, 40 seconds <laughs> at the <laughs> to, most to get a little flower done. Just beautiful. Okay. Now, our last uh, tool mm -hmm. is the spritzer. And so here's the box, but you've got the actual one, uh, right? I've got the actual spritzer. Okay. So here is the actual spritzer. Here's the information that comes with it that shows you lots of ways of using it, the correct way to position it. So this is an important uh, part of your tool to help right. you uh, figure out how to use it, but it can be used with markers, which is great. This is a little hand mechanism. You can hear that? It's blowing air, and it's <laughs> going to blow ink off the end of that marker. And speaking of marker, um, the Spectrum Nor pens, which we love, uh, mm -hmm. will not work with the um, spritzer. It, um, the, this but, part. Okay, but. Did you make it work? Well, yeah. Really? Did you really? <laughs> yes. Can you tell that we don't rehearse this? Did you really? I did. Well, you, you, by the, golly. I, these very self-same. <laughs> I will say it's a little, you really have to push to get them in there. You really have to pull to get them out. But I did it. And the only reason <laughs> that it was difficult is because with these new markers, they have this rubberized end. Yeah. And that sort of likes to get hung up in there. But I found that I was able to do it. And if I can do it with my bum thumb that just had well, surgery, then you could do it. Hot damn. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen to Gail, because obviously Paulette hasn't a clue. But this is so funny. But I know the brush markers will work. And Marvy has, there's like several sets. Um, mm -hmm. And so they will there's, work. There's oh. lots of different things okay. you can use. There's lots of different sizes. You do sort of have to test the barrel on it. But uh, And the Pergamano pens will also okay, work. Right. But and you so we'll tell me. Noir. Well, okay. Okay. And I could, and I, actually I can show you okay. just briefly. Let me show you that it comes with this barrel in here that will fit the smaller pens like right. the brush markers right. that you just talked about. They'll just slide right in here and then you'll tighten it down with this. Now, if you want to use the Spectrum Noir, you're going to remove that screw. You're going to pull out that barrel and now you have a, a larger opening, which is, it's made just for this. You want to remove the chisel end of the cap and then you want to place it in there. And I turn it so that that chisel end is sort of that direction and push it in there. And this is right one of the tricks is the positioning of right. your pen. Right up. You want it over that hole just far enough to where ah. it will it will actually spray past. It will hit that and pick off ink. And I tried to get a piece of scrap paper and I kind of failed right before Here. we started. Uh, there we go. That's good. Oh, okay. Let me. <laughs> you got one? Okay, okay this? perfect. Then you're going to experiment. This is the first thing you want to do. You want to get this. You want to start experimenting. You're just going to start squeezing this. You want to point. Um, so get the angle that you feel. It's going to be different depending on the angle that you do, and you just start spraying. Oh, wow. Now, I find if you watch, before you get in too tight, back, if you can back up just a little bit. Thank you, Joe. If when you start spraying, you can watch and see this move. I didn't like that a whole lot because I was like, oh, I wanted it right there, and it sort of moved oh. away. So I found that if I hold this while I'm spraying, it's more directed, and then I can go up higher. You get more control. If I go higher, it gets larger sprays, and if I get down close, I can get really tight, oh. really tight little sprays. But that's, to me, that's just, it's a beautiful look, and, it, yes. you know, you can get it pretty... Um, you can get pretty concentrated if you keep moving it around, or you can just get these nice wide sprays right. if you back it up. And, that's and you how can it works. use any pen now. Any Spectrum Noir pen <laughs> will work just fine in there. <laughs> you just that have is to. So funny. Getting it out is the same thing. You sort of have to work it past that rubbery okay, there, but it does handle. work. Okay. okay. Hey, that is so funny. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a project that was done and using the perfect airbrush, the spritzer, but also using it on a uh, stencil. And this is the gear stencil. 
So you can see this was placed on, um, we've got the pack of tags. So it was placed over, uh, you know, it was right. eventually put on a tag, but I think first it was done on craft paper. Could be, and, and then, then yeah, glued to glued it, to right. It. But a couple of different of, uh, colors of those right. brush markers were used, so the stencil is sitting over it, and you just start spraying all over, get it to the concentration that you like. Really kind of fun with the gears that um, the black that you're seeing, are the steampunk mm -hmm. dazzles. Right. So they do a really nice job of marrying up with the right. images. The nice thing about working with these pens is that they dry really quick after you spray them. Oh, right. It's not like spraying other kinds of paints and then you have to let it dry for a long time. It's almost dry by the time you're done. Right. Just um, really, really pretty. I love that these were backed with this hammered gold paper. Yeah. That's just a really nice touch. There. There's the hammered gold. Really mm -hmm. pretty. It's available by the sheet. But isn't that, it's just, it's a really nice look and it lets your pens and your stencils kind of do double duty. Mm -hmm. But then Miss Gail came up with another idea, as she <laughs> usually does. Look at this beauty. Okay, so do you want to walk us through what you sure. did? Sure, there's a couple of different things going on. You've got, of course, these acetate butterflies on the top that have been sprayed, and I'll show you that. But also the background. I created my own stencil with the, how many butterflies? Um, Three butterflies yeah. and two shadows, right. something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, cutting dies. This is one of our cutting dies, and I just ran it all across. As a matter of fact, should I There show it that? is. Three okay. butterflies and two shadows cutting right. dies. So I took those shadows, and I uh, cut out several areas on a scrap piece of cardstock. So now I have a stencil. Right. You do that with all of our cutting dies. <laughs> Make <laughs> By stencils golly. with our cutting dies. And then I put that all, I set that on top of a mirage um, paper. I actually taped it down, but in this case, I'm not going to worry about and it. And notice it's a patterned paper, I would like right? to point out. A patterned paper. I took from the turquoise set, I've got BT7. Of course, you can check our gallery for all of that. I remove the cap. I've got that barrel that sits in here for the smaller markers already removed. I can't tell you how delighted I am that they work <laughs> with Spectrum Noir. <laughs> and here, I'll make sure that I've got it before I Angle. push it in there. Push it all the way in. There we go. We want to make sure. So that again, you have the chisel is going right. that way. The chisel is going that way. It's right. It's sitting. And then I have to go past that little hole. Make sure you do that. Past that little hole a little bit so it's actually going to. Um, it's actually going to pick up that ink and right. spray it off the end of the pen. And then you just start putting spritzing. your ink down. You start spritzing. And it would be better if I take this down. <laughs> <laughs> and for, let's see, I want to make sure that I'm getting it sprayed right over that. Oh, oh, I missed the pen a little bit. I'm going to move the pen down a little oh, bit okay. more so I can... There. there, see, we go. with that, just adjusting the pen. Got, so if, yeah. it, if it doesn't seem to work at first, just adjust the... Adjust uh, that pen. You want to make sure that it's blowing right onto the pen, and then I just started creating my design. Right. And however, you can get closer if you want it a little more dense, or you can stay back for, far away if you want more spattering effect. So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but that's it really, you can see kind of how quickly that is. It doesn't really take much time. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and remove that so you can see. So that's a light effect of it. Right. I did it a little heavier when I did it, but um, actually, before I take this out, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to pull in my acetate butterflies. So I use the cutting die to create some acetate butterflies. I turn it over, so on the back side, I'm going to spritz this just oh. on the center. Maybe. And because that's alcohol-based, it's going to stick to the acetate. It sticks to the acetate. Right. It dries pretty quickly. So a little bit of the blue. And then from the pinks set, I'm going to go back to that pink. Hopefully that's not too yeah. dried out. It was sort of sitting there with the cap off. Okay, got that on there. And I start doing, I concentrated around the edges because I kind of like really getting that pink effect on mm -hmm. there. You just worked on that. And if you mix the blue and the pink together, you get a nice uh, purple, purple in the middle. And anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn that over to show you progress so far and what it will look like on there. Let me turn this over so you get it against a white. Well, okay. whoops. 
That's all right. Well, you can see that it, it's okay. spattered, and I, you know, you can do it with a little bit more te intensity if you like. And so then you, uh, well, should I bring the card back sure. in? Sure. Then I just place them on. The, yeah. I, I did. I did continue on this until it was nice and dark. And, mm -hmm. and then you've glued the bodies down and left the wings to flutter, mm -hmm. and just. A beautiful look, just really, really and nice. And if you notice on the edges of the card too, I've got those white lacy border dazzles, and I just oh. sort of went on the edges a little bit with the pink, just to sort of get a oh. spattering of pink on around the sides. edges. And then on the inside, I see you did more spattering, uh, right or spritzing, I should say, spritzing, right along yeah. the edge. Beautifully done. Nice use of multiple things. And it's a fun tool to play with. You really want to, before you start doing this, you want to practice, you want to spray around a little bit and see what kind of effects you can get. Right. So as we said, our tools are the square cage. Right. And We've got those great D's distinctively right. cutting dies, which can make some really unique effects. And then we've got the Spritzer Perfect Airbrush, where I have learned things today. <laughs> Thank you, lady. And hopefully you have too. Thanks.